big order from the butcher just showed up. About 250 bucks worth of meat. Can't wait to get stuck into that. What's going on guys, it's Vaughn here from Body Elements. I'm gonna show you my one month experience on the carnivore diet. Now the carnivore diet is a diet that's comprised entirely of animal based products. So you're eating anything from red meat to seafood, eggs, and even some dairy products. I know some carnivore diets don't incorporate dairy products, but I was having a little bit of milk, feta cheese, and a tiny little bit of Greek yogurt. Now I just wanna disclaim that I'm not a medical professional. This is just my experience on the carnivore diet. If you're having any real health problems regarding your diet, go speak to your doctor. Let's get stuck into it. So officially one week into the carnivore diet. Um, today it's a bit of a milestone because it's the first day I've had a solid poo for the seven days. Um, I guess the colon's starting to work a bit better with the all meat. Real bad sugar cravings for the first five days. Still pretty bad now. Energy feels normal. I don't really feel any much different in energy wise. Um, I can do everything, do everything I was doing before happily. No energy spikes or dips. Been intermittent fasting. I've been eating usually my first meal between 10 and 12, and then my last meal is around 6 or 7 o'clock. Eating more than twice, two big meals a day while you're on this carnivore diet is just really, really hard. The other thing I found quite difficult is uh, keeping the calories up. So that would be a benefit to those that do this trying to lose weight, but I wasn't actually trying to lose weight on this diet. So over the next couple of weeks, I'll be definitely trying to add a bit more food in. But yeah, feeling good. Stay tuned for the two week update. So I'm just going to show you how I've been getting most of my organ meats in. Now this is raw lamb liver. I've just frozen it and cut it into little pieces. Now the best way to do this is obviously just eat it raw. Pretty gamey taste. Or if you're a bit squirmish you don't like the taste of most you probably don't really like the taste but this is an alternative way of doing it just like taking it as if it were like a little multivitamin I'll give you peace so this is what I've been using to cook with for the last couple of weeks it's probably the best thing you'll find at Woolies it's about seven bucks I've just ordered some beef tallow so that's a bit better for you but um it's obviously a bit more expensive. Just ticked over two weeks on the carnivore diet. Had my first footy training session last night. That was my first real endurance test since I started the diet. 
and it was fine. Usually I'll roll up the training about six o'clock. I'll have probably less energy at about that time of day. I'm a bit tired, but on the on the animal animal based diet, I'm feeling good. Like at that time of day, there's no there's no energy spikes and crashes, so so that's good. Um, gone to the toilet's been a bit hit and miss this week. Still having some solids and some runnies, but I think that's the nature of the adjustment. It should get better over the next week or two. Um, one thing I've noticed, I've been lifting quite heavy at the gym, heavier than what I was sort of before. I've noticed really little muscle soreness after the training sessions, which is awesome. There was a couple of days there where I felt a bit lethargic this week. I was having, um, I think it might've just been a lack of vitamins because I was eating chicken livers in the first week, which made me feel pretty good. But um, this week I didn't really have any organs in the house for a couple of days. I was supposed to get an order from the butcher, but I got stuffed around a little bit and now I'm gonna, gonna have to wait for that. Just been buying from local butchers at the moment, so it's been a bit harder to get the organs. Getting some hectic cravings now. I like to think in diets, usually two weeks is probably the hardest part. So they should slowly go away after now. We'll wait and see, eh? I'll see you at the three week interval. Big order from the butcher just showed up. About 250 bucks worth of meat. Got some beautiful T-bone steaks. Some nutrient enriched sausages, mints. So that'll have some um, organ meat in there. Got some grass fed neck bones, it's all grass fed and free range. Um, pork, lamb leg, lamb four quarters. <laughs> Got some beef cheeks and a nice big brisket. I've also got some of this tallow to cook with. Pure grass fed. Can't really see those, but sure. Can't wait to get stuck into that. Officially three weeks into the carnivore diet. Still feeling really good. Not having any energy spikes still. The energy's consistent all day. I'm still craving some other foods. Not as bad as I was at the two week mark. A couple of days ago, I probably had my most solid stool I've had this whole, this whole diet, which is really good. The colon's obviously starting to work a bit better with the meat, which also begs the question of whether fiber is actually required in your diet. The diet's currently passing the endurance tests, the strength tests, everything I was doing before I can still do. The only thing I'm still struggling with is getting those calories in, as you'll probably notice from a couple of the scale updates. If I planned a bit better, it'd probably be a bit easier, but at the moment I'm just cooking and eating as much food as possible while still training a fair bit. Probably burning about two and a half to 3,000 calories a day on my current schedule, so that is a fair bit of food to eat. Let's see how the next 10 days goes, eh? So it's officially the 1st of February. That marks the end of my carnivore diet. I'll just do a quick recap of the last 10 days. 
uh, I felt pretty much the same as I did over the third week. Not a whole lot changed. Um, energy's, energy still felt, felt good. Still went on the toilet well. You know, it's all, it's all been pretty consistent after the, after the um, start of the third week, to be honest. The last two weeks have been good. As we got closer to the end of January, I'm obviously getting a bit more keen to eat something. Pretty keen to have something like a burger or just some cake. These are my progress shots from the start of the diet to the end of the diet. Not a heap's changed, just lost a little bit of fat percentage. I'll quickly go through my blood test results as well. So I had these done on the 2nd of February, which is the day after the diet finished. You can see from all the results and the reference column on the side that everything is within recommended values. This tells me that in the short term, this diet is sustainable in terms of health. The only thing that come up outside of the recommended levels was the neutrophils with a value of 1.6, which is only 0.4 below the recommended value of two. My doctor advised that the neutrophils may not even be directly affected by diet. Other than that, let's move on to the pros and cons of the diet. We'll go through the pros first and then we'll go through a couple of the cons. So the first pro I wanted to bring up was the muscle soreness. So I was lifting pretty heavy throughout this, throughout this diet and as I was increasing the weight, I still didn't notice a whole lot of muscle soreness, which was really good. Yeah, it's a great way of restricting calories. So if you're trying to lose weight, this is a diet I'd actually recommend. Because you're just taking in so much protein and fat, you're not really losing any muscle mass either. The reason it's so easy to restrict calories is because you feel so full after you eat. The, the food's so satiating that it's hard to actually keep the calories up, which can also be a con. It's also, I found, a really good form of food elimination. So an elimination diet is when someone sort of just cuts down to really basic, basic foods to see which ones their body responds to well. Personally, over this diet, I found my body responds really well to good free range meat. I love seafood and organ meats. Organ meats was a massive one. Eggs, body responds really well to eggs. Another thing my body was responding to well was undercooked meats. So a lot of my meat, I was cooking sort of medium to medium rare. As I started getting into the diet, I started cooking a few things rare and seeing how it felt. And I found the body it might just be me making stuff up, but it seemed like the body digested the food better. The, the foods my body didn't respond to well were chili variants of food, so like chili jerky and chili tuna. My body didn't really like milk, cheese, yogurt. I was having a bit of Greek yogurt, yeah, and feta cheese, and it just wasn't responding well to that. Processed meats, so any kind of like salamis, uh, those prepackaged sausages, didn't respond to bacon well either. The other thing I was having during the diet was protein shakes to keep the calories up and my body did not respond well to protein shakes. It's another one of those things where that form of nutrients is just so processed that it's, it's hard to keep up with what's going in there. So if you're having that grass fed food, there's just not an ingredients list. So a couple of the other pros is there's no energy spikes. I was getting footy training in the afternoon and I wasn't feeling flat, which I usually do. By about six o'clock I'm feeling really, yeah, really lowly. So I could train at night, I could train in the morning and it all felt the same. Yeah, I found it really um, stopped bloating as well. It made it really easy to do intermittent fasting. So I was eating at about 10 to 11 every day and having my last meal at about six to seven. So a big one for me was I was wasting way less food than when I was eating a lot of plants because usually when I buy plant food, you see in the bottom of the fridge, there's some rotten veggies, some rotten fruits, things you're not eating. In this, I probably ate about 99% of the things I bought. The biggest one for me personally was the bowel movements because on this diet, I was probably farting like 90% less like the only times I was ever passing wind was when I was eating things like dairy or the protein shakes And that's how I sort of could tell which ones my body was responding to well and which ones weren't pretty much every time I was going to the toilet after the first first week and a half it was just Really really good stool So we'll go through a couple of the cons first it's a restricted eating diet, so it was really hard to Stay on that diet and it's it's hard when you give people those sorts of diets and they've got to restrict eating for so long quite difficult to keep the calories up. As I said before, this can be a con because for me, I was trying to actually add weight during the diet and it made it quite difficult to get the calories in without sort of feeling sick at every meal when you're trying to eat as much as possible. It's really expensive, especially if you're eating good meat, like free range meat, the good stuff, the stuff that makes you feel good. If you are what you eat, you're eating happy animals, you might be a happy person. Then there's the obvious cons like red meat causes cancer. There's a couple of research papers out that say that stuff, whether that's accurate or not based on what kind of meats they're testing, you know, whether that meat's all grass-fed meat or if they're testing people that are eating f like fast food red meat or even just the mass farm red meat because they're eating grains all day rather than eating grass and your meat's just going to be lower qualities. The other big con for me was sustainability. So whether eating all this meat was sustainable for the earth, 
if you're buying animals that are free range, you obviously have way less of an impact on the earth. But is that better than eating plants? I don't know the full basis of that research. It's definitely something worth considering. Those are the pros and cons of the carnivore diet. Read from it what you will. That's just my experience. I tried to have a really unbiased approach to this because I was actually probably about 95% plant-based for a couple of months of last year. So I've now tried both. I'm not gonna say one's better than the other. I think um, that all comes down to personal preference. That's my experience. I hope this helped a couple of you out. You know, if you wanna try it, go for it. Think about it before you try it because don't go eating shit meat the whole time. Make sure you're getting those organ meats in. Make sure you're doing it properly. Anyway, that's me. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you're enjoying the videos. And I'll see you next time.